Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well, again, we're looking at Divi 5 today and we've got a great one for you. I'm going to refresh this page. And you'll notice after about four seconds, we've got a little pop-up right here. And it's going to stay there if they scroll down the page, which is going to annoy people, but it's going to get their eyes on it pretty quick. Now I've put a little icon there that they can click on, and get rid of it. And again, if I refresh, four seconds later, that's going to pop up again. Three, four, there it is. Great. Really easy to do. We're using the new interactions feature of the Divi 5 theme for this today. And there's no coding involved whatsoever. So let's get started. I've got my builder open here. I'm going to get rid of what I've got going on for my pop-up and we'll start from scratch. We're going to be using a bit of fixed positioning for this today. So it really doesn't matter where you build this on your page. And of course you could build it into a custom header or global custom footer if you wanted it to appear on every page. So let's just start a new row. I'm going to add a row, a little green button to add a row. I'm going to use a single column for this today. You can use any modules or combinations of modules or whatever you want to fill your row with this. I'm going to use a simple call to action module. Just an example today. So there it is. Now we want a little button on it. Now for anybody that doesn't know, with a call to action module, the button's not going to show up until you put a link in for it down below. That's just under content, under the text here. As soon as you put a link in for your button, it's going to show up right there. Perfect. So this is what we're going to pop up. Now, as we're going to use fixed positioning, I want to give it a sort of little bit of crazy box shadow on the back so it stands out a little bit more. We'll do that in a minute. And also, I want to give it a little icon here that we can use to close it in a moment. So let's get all that done. First things first, I'm going to add the icon. So I'm going to hit the little add new module or row. There's the icon module. My mouse is actually on it. And I'm going to use a close icon, much as we did the other day. And let's use that one again. I'm going to make it white. It'll disappear into that background there. Icon. I'm going to make it white. As you can see, or as you can't see, it's disappeared in the white background there. That's fine. But what I want to do is put it up on the right hand side of here. And I know it's going to be too big for the time being. Let's just move it up here so we can see it again. So to do that, I'm going to go over to my advanced. I'm going to go down to position. We're going to change it from the default to absolute. Now absolute positioning, you can position it anywhere within the parent element. And the parent element of this is the row. There it is right there, way too big and it's on the wrong side. We've got a little matrix here. Let's put it on the right side. Now let's make it size that we want it. Now that we can actually see it again, back to the design icon color. Here's the size. I'm going to make mine about 30 pixels. Now it's okay, but I really don't want it to be touching that side or touching the top. So we can use a bit of offset with our icon here. Remember we made it fixed positioning. So if we go back to our advance in our position, roll down just a little bit, vertical offset. Let's take it down by about 10. And the same with the horizontal, we'll bring it in by about 10 pixels, obviously adjust to taste. That's going to work for me. Now there's the index, we don't need to adjust it at the moment. If your icon didn't show up on top of your call to action here, you could just start typing in large numbers until it does. Because what the index does, it dictates what elements sit on top of other elements. Something with a higher Z index will always appear on top of something with a lower index. But that's working for us, great. Well, let's add that crazy box shadow. I'm going to do that to the whole row itself. So I'm going to go back into the row, the green tab. And like I say, this is just so it stands out a bit more when it's in fixed position over the top of the other content. I'm going to use an all round box shadow. I don't want any vertical or horizontal position. I want it to be straight top, straight bottom, equal on all sides. I'm going to make it, let's make it maybe a hundred. You're going to find it hard to see this little gray. You can see the little gray. I'm going to darken that down in a minute. And 
Well, we'll try 30. We can always make that a bit bigger. And I'm going to make it a bit darker by pulling this up. Just keep your mouse on it. It'll in increment up as much as you want it. I think that's probably going to do it. It's cutting it off there a little bit because we're at the bottom of the page. But now I'm going to put this in fixed position. And that'll make it stand out a bit bigger. I think I can actually bring that up so it's even a little bit darker. So when it sits on top of everything else, if you want to spread this some more, there's the spread. If you want to blur it out more, that's the blur I'm using today. But I think that's going to work. So let's pop this in fixed position. Again, I'm doing this on the row. Again, it's in exactly the same place, advanced and position. This time we're going to use fixed rather than absolute. That means we can put it anywhere on the page itself. Now it's popped it up to the top left hand side there. I want mine smack in the middle. Again, we've got a little matrix here. And here we've got that problem I was talking about with the Z index. It's actually behind all these other modules here, which is not going to work at all. So if I roll down and we just start putting a couple of nines in there, just put your mouse over it. And if it comes forward like this, you know, you've gone high enough. That's great. And you can see that little box shadow is working quite well there for us. But I think what I'll do is I'll shrink this down a little bit in size and we can do it for all devices very easily. So let's go to our design. I'm going to go to sizing. I'm going to go down to width. I'm going to make it perhaps 50% of the viewable width on desktop. So I put 50 VW, 50 viewable width. And if you're not sure, you can select it from the options down here. There it is right there. That's going to work on desktop or about tablet. I think that's okay on tablet. A little too skinny on mobile. Let's give it a little bit more on mobile. Let's perhaps make it 80. Obviously adjust yours to taste. That's great. So we know it's going to work on all of our devices now. Now here comes the fun part because right at the moment, let's just save. And we'll get rid of this one. We'll re preview it. At the moment, this is what we got. It's just going to stay there all the time. Although we put this icon up there, I haven't given it an interaction yet, so it's not going to do anything. So what we need to do is when this page loads, I don't want to see it at all. Then after four seconds, I want it to come in. Once it comes in, I want them to be able to close it down by hitting this little X here. Of course, they can read it and they can hit the call to action button, what have you also. So let's add some interactions to make that happen. So we go back to our page here. First thing I want to do is I want to make this icon. I'm just going to click on the icon. Icon. I want to set it so it closes down this element. Now, just to make things easier, when you add interactions, it gives you a list of every element on the page. So I'm going to give this an admin label so I can identify it really easily. And this will save you a lot of confusion if you do that. So I've gone to the row. Under content at the bottom, you'll see admin label. I'm going to say pop up. That's fine. Let's save draft. Okay, well, let's add an interaction now to our little icon. So I'm going to go back into my icon. Over in advanced is where you'll find your interactions. There it is. Let's add an interaction. Now, what I want this little icon to do is when they click on it and hit click, I want it to hide the element. So it would have popped up by then and I just wanted to click on it and hide the element. Now, what element do I want it to hide? Well, this whole row, because the whole row includes our call to action here and the icon. Now, if I click on target module here, roll on down, there's our row. Remember I called it pop up. It's put it after it. That makes it a lot easier to identify than going through all this. That's my top row, that's the next column, there's the icon. If you just give it an admin label, it really is helpful for finding it there. So we've got the row and that's what we want it to hide when they click on it. Don't want any delay, but I want them to click on it and I want it to happen straight away. Now, I promised you this without any coding. 
Well, what I'm going to do at the end of the video, I obviously lied to you. I'm going to add a bit of code. <laughs> it's something really simple. The only bit of code I'm going to use is just a bit of CSS that when we hover over our icon, it's going to turn into a hand like you saw there. But we'll do that at the end of the video. Okay, so we've established that this icon can now close our row, our little pop-up row here. But what we've got to do, we've got to go into the row and tell it that we don't want to see it at all when the page loads. So we're going to add an interaction for that. Advanced. There's our interactions again. Let's add an interaction. I'm going to say on page load this time, when the page loads, I want to hide the element. Let's make sure we can't see this element initially. And again, we've got to choose the element. Roll down. There's our little pop-up. That's what we want to hide. Don't want any delay. I want it to hide it straight away as the page loads. I don't want them to see it. So we'll save that. But four seconds after the page loads, or however long you want, I want it to pop up. So let's add another interaction. Again, I'm going to use on page load. This time, I'm going to use show element. Target module, you know what we've got to do. We've got to find that pop up again. There it is. And this time, I'm going to give it a delay of four seconds. Now it's set to milliseconds there. You can either change it to seconds by hitting an S there, or if you want to do it in milliseconds, four seconds in milliseconds for anybody that doesn't know is 4,000 milliseconds. It's entirely up to you. Now we've got that. This should actually work. Let's save our changes. We'll save draft. Now let's preview the page. And here's our page. Two, three, four. There's our pop-up. There's our little icon. Well, obviously I can read it. Click on the thing. There's a little X icon. When I click on it, closes it right out. Just to show you again, let's refresh. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Boom. Clink. Great. And like I said earlier, what I'd like to do when this actually pops up, should be now-ish, is just change the mouse icon so that when we hover over that little X there, it's a hand. And that's really easy. And that's only a little bit of code. I'm sorry, I forgot when I said no coding involved today. I'm just going to add this, but you don't have to do this. This is just personal taste. So let's go back into the icon. Advanced. I'm going to go down custom CSS here, and it's only two words. I'm going to go to the module elements. Make sure I'm in the main element. Basically, that's the whole icon right here. I'm just going to write two words. All right, cursor, C-U-R-S-O-R, -R, colon, pointer, P-O-I-N-T-E-R. I'm going to put a little semicolon on the end just in case I want to add some more code in a minute. I'm pretty sure I don't. Now, when we hover over, it's going to change into that little hand icon. So let's save draft again. And we'll just go and refresh this page. Two, three, four. Here's our little pop up. Now, when I hover over that little X, as you can see, it's turned into a little hand icon. Take it off the X, it goes back to a regular cursor. Simple bit of CSS. I just thought I'd add that for anybody who'd like to do that. People tend to know what those little hands mean when they pop up there. So there we have it, guys. There's how to create a pop up with no code using the fantastic new interaction features of Divi 5. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. We've got plenty more coming out with Divi 5. As I've mentioned several times before in videos, we're going to be doing less and less with Divi 4 as it gets closer and closer to Divi 5 release date. But if there's anything that you need to know you're struggling with, with either Divi 4 or Divi 5, let me know down below. I'll do my best to explain it or make a little demo video just like this one. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.